Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at Nine. I'm now yes. in detail. Thousands of anti-government protesters stormed into Sri Lanka Prime Minister Ranil Wickreme Singhe office on Wednesday, hours after he was named as acting president. Men and women breached military defences and entered the Premier's office to raise national flags, witnesses told AFP. Police and troops failed to hold back crowds despite firing tear gas and water cannon to prevent. Wigre Missing here in a televised address said he had instructed security forces to restore order, but troops were seen backing down at his office, leaving gates open for protesters to stroll in. His private home was set ablaze on Saturday after protesters captured the president's office and home on Saturday. The protesters' actions were a repeat of Saturday's capture of President Kodabaya Rajabaksa's home and office, which forced him to eventually flee the country earlier on Wednesday. People in the 18 to 59 age group will get free precaution doses of the COVID vaccine at government vaccination centers under a 75-day special drive likely to begin from July 15, official sources said on Wednesday. The drive aimed at boosting the uptake of COVID precaution doses will be held as part of the government's Azadika Amrit Mahotsav to celebrate the 75th anniversary of India's independence, they said. Speaking on Modi government's decision to provide free COVID booster shots, Union Minister Anurag Thakur said India is celebrating 75 years of independence. On the occasion of Am Azadika Amrit Kal, it has been decided that from 15th July 2022 till the next 75 days, citizens above 18 years of age will be given booster doses free of cost. Keep 15 July se lekar. 15 जुलाई 2022 से लेकर अगले 75 दिन तक यानी कि 15 जुलाई से अगले 75 दिन तक देश के 18 वर्ष से ज्यादा उम्र के जितने भी नागरिक होंगे उनको बूस्टर डोज बिल्कुल मुफ्त में देने का निर्णय लिया गया है इससे जहां एक और उनको सुरक्षा भी मिलेगी पहले भी कुछ लोगों ने लगाया लेकिन वो शुल्क के साथ सशुल्क लिया जाता था प्राइवेट क्षेत्रों में भी लगता था लेकिन इससे पहले जो मुफ्त था वो फ्रंटलाइन वर्कर्स थे कोविड वॉरियर्स थे या फिर 60 साल से ज्यादा के जो नागरिक थे उनके लिए था अब इसको 18 साल से ज्यादा की उम्र वालों के लिए साफ कर दिया है कि बिल्कुल मुफ्त बूस्टर डोज अब आप लगवा सकते हो और इस सभी सरकारी केंद्रों पर जगह जगह पर उपलब्ध होगा तो मेरा आप सभी मीडिया के मित्रों से निवेदन विशेष तौर पर रहेगा so far, less than 1% of the target population of 77 grower in the 18 to 59 age group have been administered the precaution dose. However, around 26% of the estimated 16 grower eligible population aged 60 and above as well as health care and frontline workers have received the booster dose and officials are set. The Party Janda Party will be hosting a dinner meet for all its MPs on July 16 in New Delhi to deliberate over party's strategy for the upcoming president election and monsoon session of parliament. President election is scheduled to be held on July 18 and counting if needed on July 21. Monsoon session is beginning June 18. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah and BJP President J.B. Nada are likely to attend the meeting which will be held at the JMC Balayoki Auditorium inside the Parliament building premises. During the meeting, information about the procedure to be followed during President election will be passed upon to the members of Parliament who have been asked to reach Delhi by Saturday evening. For the presidential election, the NDA has fielded Drobody Murmu, while major non-BJP parties like the Congress, TMC and NCB have named Yashwan Sinha, a former union minister, as the joint nominee. After getting the support of some regional parties like the BJD, YSR, Congress, BSP, AIA, DMG, TDB, JDS and Shiromani Akali Dal and now Shiv Sena, the vote share of Murmu has already crossed 60%.
National Democratic Alliance presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu on July 13 chaired a meeting with Party Chanda Party MPs and MLAs in Jaipur, Rajasthan. Draupadi Murmu and joint opposition candidate Yashwan Sinha are the only two contesting candidates for the election to the office of the president. The voting for the presidential elections will be held on July 18. The Zisaji Presidency College, Gifri, celebrated its Silver Jubilee on July 12. On behalf of the Minister of Higher Education and Tribal Affairs, Damje Nimna Along, Liri Mong, State BGB Executive Secretary, graced the program as the Chief Guest. T. Wadi Ayer, Senior Superintendent of Police, Muta Suyi and Colonel Raghvendra Manni Tripathi, Sena Medal Commandant 41 AR Gifri, also attended the program as special guests. The founder of the college, R. L. Akumba, highlighted the journey of the college. Srimadi Helen Jamir, who was the former principal of Aziz R. G. Presidency College, introduced Helen Jamir Academic Excellence Award in English to be given from the session 2022 to 23. Youth of this aspirational district reaching all the heights possible in their career. I can only convey my best wishes to the young minds, youth of this college and also the youth of the district that nothing is impossible. If you have thought over it, if you have made your plans, if you have prepared for all unforeseen contingencies and if you are prepared for the worst and if you are doing your best you shall achieve what you aim for in your life geographical entities jinki saramati and jinko okay the acronym was developed and it became jisaji the unique sensibility is given a unique name for this college the second page is your, the discharge in the private management from 1997 to 2006. There, that period was top seat, so to say. There are some good things, some fabulous students we got. Three of them during that period clear and PSC, and one is among us today. Many students, 11, 11 students, they came and went. The first batch of you was 63 students, and five students Five, five students for BA. So with that, with that beginning, with that, uh, uh, from that stage. The, the State Council of Educational Research and Training organized state level seminar on development of Na Nagaland State Curriculum Framework at the Capital Convention Center in Gohima. Chief Secretary J. Alam in his inaugural address said that with the introduction of the national education policy in 2020, it has brought everyone associated with the school education. He said, the NEP is going to play a significant role in the socio-economic development of the country and will strengthen and improve the quality of living of citizens towards brighter future. He said that the national curriculum framework is a plan made by the government of a state or a country for the students better education and to fulfill the requirements of the students and the nation. Education is a subject that touches every one of us and all of us have strong views on how what is the state of our education and how it should be improved. There are maybe things which we are not satisfied about. There may be many weaknesses in the system, but it is also true that a lot of good work is also happening. Education as well as higher education. And uh, in the Ministry of Education, we have two departments, 
the Department of Higher Education and the Department of School Education. And both the departments have led from the front. And uh, even in our state, the Higher Education Department, Technical Education Department, School Education Department, SCRT, everyone has been working hard towards translating the policy into action. And uh, the policy also has given milestones. Certain things have to be done at certain milestones. So everyone is trying to achieve those milestones within the deadlines. And I am happy to say that our state, our officers, and all those people who are involved in taking follow-up action, they have been working very hard. Commissioner and Secretary of School Education and SCERT, Kevileno Angami, said that the state curriculum framework will benefit the various stakeholders, participants towards developing the thematic papers as implementation guidelines for early childhood education. She said the department is at the threshold of change to the new and once the curriculum is developed, the school's education will be restructured and recalibrated. Developing the thematic papers, members of the focus group and members of the SCF, all those who have given their inputs. Your inputs are critical because they will form the basis on which our children would be studying, our children would be uh, the, uh, developing, uh, the SERT would be developing the textbooks for our children to be studying in the schools in the future. So your critical inputs, your contribution are crucial. The curriculum framework committees were formed. One is for the school education and ECC, one was for adult education, and one was for teacher education. SCRT has been made the nodal department for carrying forward this objective. And accordingly, they form thematic groups and focus papers, focus groups, and accordingly, 25 thematic papers have been submitted. The Aspirational Districts Collaborative Pyramal Foundation on July 13 hosted a conclave of local non-governmental organizations at the Hobongkyu Memorial Hall in Kifri Town. Leaders and representatives from 14 NGOs participated in the conclave. The Aspirational Districts Collaborative is a Pyramal Foundation initiative in collaboration with Niti Ayok to build a grassroots ecosystem of change leaders from the community to work together with the district administration in transforming the aspirational districts into inspirational districts. Our uh, society at par with the rest of the district, with the rest of the state, and with the rest of the country. So this is the aspiration that we all have. We want to bring a facility to our district. We want to bring the latest facility which is available in the uh, cities and towns in the district, uh, in the state capital. But we have many lapses and lacks where proper information Proper uh, feeding was not given to the concerned departments and to the higher ups. Yes, under the Saki One Stop Center, uh, we deal with women affected by violence. So, uh, you all might know how this scheme came about uh, in the year 2012, a nearby case. From this case, uh, the central, uh, central government has decided to uh, open up the One Stop Center in all the districts and in all the states. And in our Kifri district, uh, we now created in the year 2019 and we have been working this one. Till July, as of now, we have completed uh, five five courses. And then uh, in that, in that the total number of beneficiaries is 208. And newly enrolled is 101. And we have already discussed, uh, we, have, we also have an executive committee of JSS. And we have discussed that there are so many uh, skill development training that is going on in Kifri town. But uh, looking at the village areas, uh, they are very lax. And for village people, I think 
it, it becomes very difficult for them to come here, settle here, and then take training. It becomes uh, like more expenses for them. It was informed that the establishment has introduced eight courses, out of which three courses are in progress. Approximately 208 students have completed courses in self-employed tailoring, assistant data entry operator, and other courses. The NGO aims to establish a training center in all villages in Gifre district as long as there are sufficient number of students enrolled for the training. The Supreme Court will hear pleas challenging the Agnipal recruitment scheme for Defence Forces on July 15. The plea will be heard by a bench of justices, D.Y. Chandrachut and A.S. Popana. Various petitions were filed before the top court challenging the Agnipat recruitment scheme for defense forces. The central government has also filled a caveat application in the Supreme Court, urging it to hear the government in the petitions filed before the top court challenging the Agnipat recruitment scheme for defense forces. Punjab Chief Minister Pakwant Man on Wednesday announced a comprehensive inquiry into the irregularities in the post-metric scholarship scheme to nail the guilty of this heinous crime against students of weaker and underprivileged sections. The Punjab government is committed to ensure that oil and truth comes out in the scheme so that embezzlers are punished as per the law, said the Chief Minister. Man further said, that the embezzlement of the funds under the post-metric scholarship scheme has ruined the bright future of millions of scheduled caste students by depriving them of quality higher education. The chief minister said that these irregularities were a daylight robbery over the interests of the weaker sections and his government cannot sit on its hands for allowing the culprits to move freely. Manipur police team seized opium worth about Rs 10 crore in the international market on July 13. One accused in the drug case has been arrested. More people involved in the case are being propped. More details are awaited. The total amount of the recovered uh, seized items would be about uh, 10 crores in international market. The details of the arrested person is Sadiq Muhammad, 44 years, son of Safi Muhammad of Indranagar, Jodhpur, Sangriya Fanta, Sangharia, Jodhpur, Rajasthan. So in this case, we have uh, registered a case in Imphal Peace and we are inquiring as to who all are involved in, the, in this particular case. While the national capital has gotten respite after the city witnessed rainfall for continuous two days, incessant downpour in other parts of the country is creating havoc and many cities in Maharashtra and Gujarat are facing a flood-like situation. The weather department has predicted heavy rain at isolated places in Delhi for Wednesday and Thursday. The capital's adjoining areas in Uttar Pradesh may also see moderate rain accompanied by thunderstorms. Met officials say there may be no significant change in maximum temperatures over northwest India during the next five days. Three residents of Madhya Pradesh died and as many others are missing after their SUV was swept away from a flooded bridge in Maharashtra's Nagpur district on Tuesday, police said. The deceased were residents of Bedul district in MP. After heavy showers in Delhi on Tuesday, traffic snarls and water locking in parts of the city, including Burari and Jasola. 
Water locking also hampered the flow of traffic in central Delhi. Municipal Corporation of Delhi said it had received complaints related to water locking from residents of Pitampura, Ritala, Biswasan and Shivaji Vihar. At least 19 complaints were received related to uprooting of trees from several areas including Rajori Garden, West Punjab Park, Ashok Nagar, Dwarka, Jahangirburi and Kingsway Camp officials said. Amid incessant heavy rainfall lashing Mumbai city, the Anteri subway continues to remain submerged under the rainwaters. At least 18 people, including six children, were killed in rain-related incidents in Maharashtra, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, while thousands were evacuated and forced to stay in shelter homes amid continued heavy rains in the states on Tuesday. Three children were killed and four others injured after being struck by lightning amid rains in Madhya Pradesh's Agar Malwa district. Heavy downpour covered more areas of Gujarat on Tuesday, where six people died in rain-related incidents in the last 24 hours, raising the toll to 69 since June 1. Bengaluru may see a generally cloudy sky with light rain till July 16. While no alert has been issued for Bengaluru, more than seven districts in Karnataka, namely Dakshina, Kannada, Uttara, Kannada, Kotaku, Chikmakul, Shimoka and Utubi are on orange alert and may see heavy rain. Mumbai remains on orange alert for the next two days as moderate to heavy rain is expected till Thursday. As per the regional weather department, extremely heavy rainfall may also lash several parts of the maximum city on Wednesday. That's all for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.